Hi plant friends, today is a house plant tour. I'm long overdue for a house plant tour. I don't think I've done one in almost a year, especially for the full house plants. I've done the Hoyas, but not all the plants. First plant up is the Plumeria. This beauty is doing absolutely gorgeous. She's got five spikes. I've had this one in my collection for about seven or eight years. She's bloomed numerous times and she's branched out quite a bit. The plant does go dormant in the winter, so you can see a few of her yellowing leaves. She's completely naked over the winter and about May or so, that's when I move her outside to enjoy summer. To save on space in behind the plumeria, I've got a few plants. I've got a um, dragon wing sense of area and a couple of Hoyas. I've got a Hoya black margin and I also have um, Hoya imbricata. I've got a few um, propagations that I'm working on. I've got a few cuttings on mounts and they're doing really good. It does like a lot of humidity so I've got it in a cloche. So far it's giving me a new leaf since it's been propagated. The mother plant is also under a cloche. I keep the mother plant under a cloche as well. It requires a lot of humidity and although this plant likes it humid, it also likes it nice and bright requires a lot of sun. I have it in the south facing window so it's getting a lot of sun from the balcony. It really enjoys that along with the humidity. You can see it's practically devouring the pot. In the south facing window I also have the AMAC. This plant's getting a lot of nice sunshine. It really loves this spot. If you watch my haul video on this one, you'll notice that the plant has grown quite a bit since I added it to my collection. So most people have a coffee table and it's a coffee table for books. Mine's a coffee table for plants. So I've got my, um, Orchids here. I really enjoy this pot that it's in. It's nice and airy. To water this, I just put it in a bowl every week and that seems to be fine for this plant. It is a beautiful orchid, however it's not fragrant. I'll insert a picture of it. I also have a few Hoyas sitting on this table. I've got the Hoya Chinguinensis. This one, I received it as a tiny little cutting and it's doing really well. It really enjoys this table that gets a lot of bright filtered sunlight. We also have the Hoya Maniparensis. I love the way this one looks. And look at it glowing in that sunshine. In the afternoon, I tend to open the curtains for these beauties where the sun is not as strong during the day. I'm thinking these babies would scorch since I do get up quite a bit of sunlight. Look at this Hoya Pachaclada with the inner variegation. It's doing fantastic. It has two vines growing and I've kept it in the same nursery pot from the store. It actually likes a lot of water. I tend to water this one two to three times a week. Ah, oh, this beauty is from my friend Gabriella. Isn't this beautiful? It's a variegated African violet. It puts out some beautiful pink flowers. And ever since I received this beauty, it's been constantly blooming which is just fantastic. I'm just happy it's a, a happy plant in my care. Look at those blooms. And the variegation on this beauty is just stunning. This beauty I recently picked up. It's a new addition to my collection. 
And let's have a look. It's the Phalaenopsis violacea indigo. It's actually put out quite a bit of new roots, which is so impressive. And a spike since I've brought it home. It's just wonderful. I'm so happy this plant is enjoying its spot. I pretty much just brought it home, plopped it on this table, and it's enjoying it, so I'm reluctant to move this baby. Also on this table, I've got my Phalaenopsis Tine Shin Fly Eagle currently resting. Over the summer, it bloomed quite a bit. It currently has a spike that's bent, and look at how long that spike it is spike is it's bloomed consistently for me for um, about a year now I can cut that spike and hopefully this one will continue growing as well on this table I also have a few Hoya cuttings I've got the Hoya Acuta variegata with the outer variegation they're just sitting in water Look, they're working on some roots. Almost time to pot these babies up. And this one, it's, um, I can't remember the name, oh my goodness. But I got it from one of my subscribers. Which, it's so good. Look at that sun stressing. I really enjoy that. So I've got them sitting there. Something that I should do really soon is pop these babies up now you've probably been eyeing these orchids in the background I've had them for quite a long time they've produced a lot of roots they really enjoy this table they get morning Sun as well as Sun in the afternoon The roots are absolutely amazing. It started off with three orchids in one pot. This is one of the originals. This beauty is also an original. And this one is original as well. Since it's been in, been in the spot and in this pot for a number of years, the plant has produced two keikis. This keiki is humongous. It, that is a entirely adult orchid. And we also have a second keiki off the side, just protruding out of one of the holes in the pot. Just amazing. And I think I see a spike. That looks like our first spike for the season. This is when orchids tend to give off spikes. In the fall when they get cool temperatures, it induces the need to put out a spike and in about December, that's when they start to bloom. I need to cut back a few of these spent spikes. Although this one's green, I'm gonna cut it back. The plant's getting a little bit unruly and I know if I let this go, it's gonna continue branching out at the same time put out new spikes and it's gonna be a total mess. It will be a beautiful mess, but a little bit too much since it's, they're currently blocking the TV when they're full, in full bloom. So I need to cut these babies back. Take a look at this gem. Oh, it's the Euphorbia melii or the crown of thorns. This was just a little wee plant when I purchased it and now it's grown into this gorgeous beauty. I've actually taken cuttings, I've given to my mom and my sister and recently we found the variegated crown of thorn at um, Vandermeer. So my mom and sister was very happy to add that to their collection. They've always come to my home and admire the one that I've got. It actually hasn't branched. I tried to do the um, air layering and it hasn't pushed out any roots. And so she just wants to be by herself. She doesn't want me to share her. <laughs> By 
the TV. I've got a few more orchids. This is one from my from one of my hauls. And this is a variegated orchid with beautiful flowers. I also have her in this holy pot that I soak once or twice a week. Sometimes I'll come by and feel the leaves. If they're a little bit soft, that's when I will um, give them a little bit of extra water. Right now they're nice and firm, so I know that they're well hydrated. Behind the TV, I've got a few plants hiding out. This is a nice sunny corner. So I've got the lithops. Take a look at this. Oh my gosh, it's in bloom. Plant friends, this is lithop season. This is when they tend to bloom the most. I give them a little bit extra water, but be very sparing with the amount of water that you give them. Look at that, just wonderful. I think they enjoy the cool temperatures of fall. I also have a bowl with um, what agaves, astrophytums just amazing and look at this crested beauty plant friends I really enjoy putting plants in a bowl especially since I don't have a lot of space this is a great space saving idea you can collect and enjoy plants put them all in one pot and save on space it's getting cold so I just brought the Hoya Astralis in from outside and boy did she have an amazing summer look at all these peduncles just absolutely gorgeous I can't wait for this baby to bloom She's doing really good. I'm keeping her in this nice sunny spot so she can work on these flowers for us. Just amazing. Although she spent a lot of time in full sun this summer, I think it paid off. Her leaves are a little bit scorched and they normally turn green in the summer. I've done this before and when I bring her back inside they'll turn a pardon me they're yellow in the summer and when I bring them inside for the winter they green back up quite nicely so this is going to be a beautiful display when she blooms my friends another space saving idea I have is potting up my cactus in a bowl this way I'm able to enjoy multiple plants without um, sacrificing space. Look at this one. The Tanzanian zipper plant has just spread all over the pot. It's popping up here and there. This mammillaria bloomed quite a bit over the summer. You can see some of her spent blooms. And the old man cactus is doing great. These all started as 2.5 inch potted plants. Now they're huge, all except for the euphorbia. Initially, I had only the euphorbia in this pot and to save one space, I added more plants. <laughs> let's take a look at this cactus bowl from the back I've got a few dead plants sprinkled around the sides of the pot there's a Tanzanian zipper plant just popping up out of nowhere and look at that my euphorbia decurii has some tiny little blooms on them for some reason I'm just drawn to those plants with the odd beauty I find them so attractive and look at this, the booby cactus. And this is all new growth from over the summer. Quite excited about that. This scotch bonnet plant spent all summer on the balcony where it enjoyed a lot of sun. 
and you can see that it really did by all the fruit that it produced look at this pepper it actually looks like a scottish bonnet which was brought to my attention by one of my planty friends if you follow me on instagram i post pictures quite often so you'd have seen this beauty being displayed I'm gonna keep this plant indoors over the winter. She has quite a bit of flowers still on, so I believe I'll be able to pollinate these flowers to induce blooms over the winter. She's in a sunny spot, so I'm hoping she'll continue to flourish. This corner is west facing, so it's getting sun from about 1 p.m. until sunset. This plant really enjoyed this spot. It's produced quite a bit of leaves over the summer. I received this one from Gabriella. It's um, a philodendron um, Prince of Orange Moonlight. Although it's a titled the uh, Prince of Orange it does look like a Macaulay's finale to me either way I really enjoy this beauty I've got more plants tucked in the corner over here I've got the Aliwadi Ascend Ascendants I repotted this guy it's in a nice chunky mixture well draining I water this plant once a week I recently picked it up at the Toronto cactus and succulent show and it hasn't dropped any leaves since coming home with me I'm quite impressed about that behind I've got the totem pole cactus that spent all summer on the balcony getting a lot of Sun this one I water when the um, totem pole feels a little bit soft it's soft at the top but still firm at the bottom I'm gonna hold off watering that it's one of my favorite plants so I don't want to rot that beauty so I try to be very careful with that In this corner, I also have my Euphorbia Candle Opera, and it's enjoying this spot. You can tell that it's enjoying the spot by the little leaves that it's produced on the stems. This one's actually considered a succulent. I water it every two weeks, but when I water it, it's a nice soaking of water and it really drinks that up over the two weeks. Since it's in a bright spot, I try to give it a good soaking. Just beside my kitchen sink, I've got the Calathea Rufa Barbara, which is doing great. I was so apprehensive about getting a Calathea and I was happy I was encouraged to get one. Once again, Gabriella, you're right. Calatheas are not fussy. You just have to keep them well moistured. I give this one water every two days and it really enjoys it. Under the back side of the leaves, it's nice and fuzzy. It's quite a nice feeling to, um, to pet this plant. By the sink, I also have the Alocasia cupria. This plant really likes it here. I notice that as the sun changes throughout the day, her leaves sort of move and dance, sort of similar like um, a prayer plant. Now this one, I don't let it dry out. I keep the soil nice and moist. So the sink is a perfect spot. When I'm washing dishes, I look over, make sure her soil is not too dry. If it is, I just give her a little sprinkle of water. And she also gets added moisture from my diffuser. I tuck it in there right beside the calathea and the alocasia to keep this as a nice humid spot. The Madagascar palm also lives in the kitchen. I'm expecting that these leaves will fall over the winter. Whenever it gets a little bit cool, I find that this beauty likes to go dormant and drop the leaves. I water it every two weeks. This pot doesn't have a draining, drainage hole, so I give it a little tip of water and it drinks that up over a two week period. Plant friends, I still have a few more plants in the living room to show you, so I'll have to split this into two videos. 
this will be part one and then I'll have part two next up is the ficus tanniki and the tanniki is struggling ever since I've purchased this plant she's been dropping leaves I try to cut back on watering I try to water more often but um, somehow she keeps struggling I'm trying not to give up on this plant I'm gonna keep her for one more season and see what happens I've actually tried notching where I've cut the node to produce another branch it did that but the branch is still a little bit straggly at the bottom of the pot I've got few Horonia Zabrinas sitting it's one of my saving space methods below I also have the Raven ZZ plant I'm running out of space so I've just tucked this one in a corner where it's getting bright light no direct sun these can handle low light conditions so I've got it tucked in a spot where it's not gonna get too much Sun my friends I also have the psychopsis in my living room enjoying a lot of bright light it's really happy it's pushed out two new growth which I'm quite excited about and thank you to all my planty friends that recommended watering this one a little bit more often so I water it every two days I picked up this one at the flower market back in I believe June maybe early July and this plant's doing very well it's uh, continuously in bloom currently it's taken a little bit of a break but you can see these buds are just about ready to open it has uh, three spikes and it's just growing fantastic I'm glad I added this to my collection it's actually my fourth time trying the psychopsis so I'm happy that I'm having success with this one. Thank you to all my planty friends that recommended all the tips for growing this one. Plant friends, the final plant for part one is the Monstera. I've had this one in my collection for a long time. It hasn't grown much, probably because I keep it in such a dark spot my home does get a lot of light but I consider this little corner to be one of the darkest spots in my home I've not repotted the plant in all the years I've had it and that shows on the leaves I don't have that double fenestrations and I don't have it on a moss pole it's just doing its own thing Plant friends, if you've got a Monstera, you want it to grow bigger and uh, lots of fenestration, you have to up pot these, put them in a bigger pot and attach them to a moss pole and then they will do the big leaves and the fenestrations. At the moment, I'm quite happy with the plant being more compact. Thanks for watching today's house plant tour. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and follow me on Instagram at Life of Belina.